contest.
into the ring. Thank <laughs> you. 
There's nothing inside When it always me When it all the walls Is that a way For me to break I'm a chef shifter At post masquerade Hiding both face and mind Afraid for you to draw I'm a chef shifter Have no face to show Just don't take off my mask My disguise Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Smash for, with Post University. I'm Frisco. I'm very happy to be starting the season again. I've missed this so much. Jeez. <laughs> We've got Post University Eagles versus the Catholic University of America Cardinals. How's it going, everybody? Some new faces I see. Oh, jeez. Hello. I'm Frisco. For all of you who don't know me, I'm Frisco or Armand, whatever you want to call me. It doesn't matter. Uh, I am, I've been, oh, oh, I guess we're mm, feeling spicy with the arena. Uh, by the way, let me know, it's a little while since I've done this, so let me know if the mix both between my voice and the game is, if, if it's out of whack, if I need to change anything, like lower my voice or lower the music, just let me know, I'll change it. Um, but I'm Frisco, been doing this for post for a little while. Always fun to see uh, a little bit of Smash. Uh, tonight, as I said, it's going to be the Eagles versus uh, CUA Cardinals. Uh, now we have a, we have quite a few new people and some re and actually some returning people uh, compared to previous seasons. Uh, today we're going to be seeing Rhino, Rathanite, Box, and Shadow. Now I don't believe I've seen Box or Shadow uh, play yet, and that's going to change tonight. Hopefully, I'm excited, especially because now that there's a Sonic. Sonic and a Pyramithra. Now, leading into this, Post historically, Post historically has had a lot of heavies uh, in their history. And what I mean by that is there's a lot of characters 
uh, coming from posts that are very heavy in weight, meaning they can last a lot longer uh, on the damage scale. Because again, Smash is not a game about life, per se. You don't really measure Smash as in, like, you deplete a life bar down to zero, or something like that. Smash works completely differently, where we work based off a percentage in stock mile, where uh, the higher percentage you rack up on damage, the farther that you get hit off the stage. So the more damage you do to your opponent, the higher percentage they'll have, and the farther they'll get thrown off. The game boils down to, can you take a life first? And a life in this game, is just the term is called stocks, Stocks are determined by if you can get your opponent to be thrown off-screen. There's an off-screen barrier wall um, that denotes that they die. Once they hit reach that certain threshold at the edge of the stage, they have lost a stock. So you can rack up as much damage as you want on your opponent, but it doesn't make a difference if you're not killing if you're not taking a stock off of them essentially. So you tem you tend to want to try and get stocks off as early as possible. Um, that gives you the most uh, worth of your individual stock. And yes, you'll see as we start playing the game for anybody who's not quite familiar with this game. It'll make a lot more sense uh, in the going. But Post in the past has played a lot of carrier characters that are heavier in weight. And by he when you're heavier in weight, you're a lot harder to move around. Characters like Bowser, Snake, Rob. These are all characters that are heavier in weight and take a little bit more pressure to actually get them to the end of the stage. Oh, how's it going, Supersonic? Good to hear from you, man. Uh, I'm gonna join the arena back up now that we have the arena code. Uh, one moment. I just need to block out the screen just in case. I will be right back. Okay, now we're back. Step into the ring. Now, starting off for post today is going to be Rhino, Rhino, um, and Rhino is a returning player from the previous season. Right now, Rhino is a Smash Team captain, uh, and he plays Rob. Now, Rob is a more traditional post character, uh, where Rob is a heavy character. He tends to last. He tends to live for a long time. Percentage doesn't necessarily matter so much to Rob. He, his, his stock, his percentage milestone kind of goes a lot longer. He tends to live a lot longer. Rob tends to really... Um, he's like a combo heavy character, essentially. Uh, where he has like all the benefits of like a light character, where they are very combo heavy and can keep combos lasting long and can potentially kill early. Um, while also having a lot of the benefits of a heavy character. The only really downside Rob has is that he's heavy, and when you're heavy, you tend to be comboed a lot longer. So there's 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 benefits to little things as we go along. I don't know if we're doing a button check or if we're going right away. We're going right away. So right now we have Rob versus Dark Pit, and Dark Pit is going to be a more traditional balanced character, where a little stronger in some regards to, to Pit when it comes to strength and kill potential. But Dark Pit doesn't have, like, a ton of, like, you know, crazy combos. He just has some pretty medium, like, two, three hit extensions. Uh, but he has, like, a, an all-balanced uh, kind of stat sheet where he can kind of move around effectively while also getting effective damage. But nothing overly overtuned on a character like this. And right now we're kind of seeing the combo potential behind Pit right now on Rhino. Rhino taking a bit more damage, 177. Can Rhino turn it around? We have the offstage situation and disadvantage. Up tilt. Then I'll get fall right out of that. Don't get the uh, get the jab fall off of that. Get up attack and a miss. I actually like those jabs in the corner. Get like light pressure. That's very uncommittal. Down throw to up smash. Chew at certain percents. Not quite yet though. Trying to dash attack and up tilt right right back in the opposite direction. Again, the point of Smash is to get your opponent off stage and then solidify the kill by getting just far enough off enough. Back air is getting really close. Ooh, down air is going to spike. First blood coming for CUA. Down throw. Go for, uh, right now he should go for up air. Ooh, unfortunate. Going to get the footstool off on him though. Side B should do it. Not quite enough damage on Dark Pit. I would say a throw should probably do it about now. 
Ooh, get up attack me a bit. Snuff out that side B. They are off stage. Dash attack, that can be punished back throw. Not enough damage for up throw. Now, certain throws are gonna, um, certain characters are gonna be more prone to killing, and other throws are gonna be more prone to doing damage. That up throw is a kill throw, but it's only at like really high percentages does it really kill. Wow, I'm actually surprised the arrow killed at that percent still, but hey, take him when you can get him. 79% on Rainu though, working at a deficit. Really needs to kind of leave disadvantage right now. When you're up in the air and smash, when you're above your opponent, that is tends to be the worst place you can be. You usually want to be on the ground at center stage, as that's where you're most advantageous. Side B gonna catch a landing. Catching landings in this game is also huge. If you can find the spot where your opponent is about to touch the ground, that's usually the best spot in which to actually punish them. Down throw into uh, down smash, rather down air into up air. And dash attack is going to take it. Rob is heavy, but that was too high of a percent for this. Down tilt into the nares. Nair strings. This is where Dark Pit kind of shines. But you see, Dark Pit only gets those kind of two or three hit combos. Rob can take hit a little longer uh, via combo if he can actually pull them off. FTL going to push him to the other side of the stage. Up there. Side B. Right now, Rainu is playing a pretty decent keep away game. Kind of getting the punish on these landings. 53%. If Rainu can get the stock now, he's going to not be that far behind. Yeah. I would like to see Rainu kind of go for... Ooh, really banking on that low recovery. And this is where you get punished. Can't, does he have enough gas to get back? Yes, he does. I would go for more down airs at ledge. That tends to be Rob's kind of solidified kill when it comes to two-framing. Ooh, good down air to knock out the uh, arrow. Not quite enough to get killed off the top. Let's see if Rhino can snag one more stock. And down air into up smash is going to be a confirm on some heavier characters. Rob being heavy enough. And that's going to put Post like down to nine. Standing. In CUA, down to 11. So, the format of tonight is going to be uh, a 4v4. Now, this is a Smash Crew battle. And how it works is we have four players on each side. And each player for each team has three stocks. So, as you can see at the very start, we had 12 stocks on each side. When a player is completely knocked out, it means they lost three stocks. So, in this case, Ryan, you lost all three stocks. Uh, Krolo the Dark Pit player only lost one. Thus, Post is at nine, and CUA is at 11. The first team to reach zero stocks uh, loses. The first team to deplete the other team's stocks wins. Uh, then we repeat that process again until we reach a best of three. So a team must deplete all of the team's stocks twice in order for them to win. So this is a best of three. Uh, actually, I just realized I have it marked as up, up one. And that is not true at all, so I'm going to get rid of that. Zero. Now, Smash is a relatively complicated game when it comes to the art of stage bands. So what we have here is the stage list. The very first round of each match, we only have access to the top row up there of starters. So the first match could be on Battlefield, Town & City, Pokemon Stadium 2, Smashville, and Small Battlefield. After the first match, which we just passed the first match, three more stages get added. Uh, the winner of the previous match gets to ban three stages, and the loot and the team that's going into the match that just lost gets to pick a stage that's remaining. So this is how we kind of decide what stages we go to. Uh, now with Dark Pit, you know, you know there's kind of a, a blank canvas when it comes to. Uh, what could the Cardinals probably know as the team listing for post. Um, but you tend to want to remove stages that your character doesn't do great on in these situ situations. So Dark Pit's really an all-around character. He can function in a variety of different situations. Um, so he might want to kind of keep stages 
uh, open that are more neutral and less polarizing. So he might want to ban stages like Final Destination, where zo certain zoning characters and certain uh, FGC characters can really shine on, uh, but Pit Dark Pit doesn't really get a, a huge benefit from. Um, and there's 80-something characters in this game, so there's a wide variety of possibilities on who we can fight. Uh, you might also want to ban stages like uh, Kalos Pokemon League to an extent, um, though Dark Pit can probably make those upper platforms on the sides work. Um, probably the most beneficial stages for Dark Pit are going to be st stages like Battlefield, which we saw, uh, Pokemon Stadium 2, Smashville. A lot of the starter stages are going to work out well. Hollow Bastion would as well, too. I feel like Dark Pit wouldn't be the best on flatter stages, such as Kalos Pokemon League, Town and City, or Final Destination, uh, but he can definitely make them work. He, he is a completely viable character. It's probably somewhere between mid and low high tier, if you push the character hard enough. But now, what we're going to see from post is Ratha, and Ratha plays K. Rool. Now, if we look at the stage list, K. Rool is, an, is a heavy character very heavy character. Uh, not not incredibly mobile, but he's but he's kind of a fast faller, so he has some like vertical potential. Uh, the benefit of K. Rool is his armor, where a lot of his attacks can take hits that, you know, he'll take the damage, but he won't get knocked back, which means he can power through certain attacks and, and punish his opponent for them. Um, and for a heavy such as K. Rool, he has a lot of projectiles too, which you'll see. He can throw his crown, he has his blunderbuss, um... He can, has a reflector, which is kind of unheard of for certain heavies. The best stages for K. Rool are going to be Smashville and Hollow Bastion it, because of that middle platform. Uh, plus, crown, his, for, his primary projectile, Crown, can travel the entire stage relatively quickly. So it, may, it, it makes a lot of room for K. Rool to benefit. Plus, K. Rool has an up air, which is when he's in the air, he can hit the up he can hit up and A in order to throw an attack that lifts him up, and it's a very strong kill move. And that middle platform, you might not be able to see it, um, on, let's say on Hollow Bastion, you can see there's a platform in the middle. If he can get his opponent on that platform, and he can hit them with an up air, uh, and you know, off of that platform, he tends to kill a lot earlier than he typically can. So, those are reasons why K. Will, will really do well there. So, if those are open, I would suggest Ratha really goes there. It's going to be tough for K. Rool, because Pit is, is a relatively combo-heavy character. And we are at Hollow Bastion. Very good pick. Um, Dark Pit is a, is a relatively combo-heavy character. And K. Rool can suffer from getting comboed if he doesn't get his armor out in time. But if, he, if you know, if uh, Rathith decides to throw out Nair every once in a while during mid-combo, he might be able to punish him off of a hit. Good air dodge back to stage. you got to be careful with those. See, and there we see us all the armor power, go powering through the uh, uh, Dark Pit's attack to get the punish off. That up smash is going to cover a good chunk of the stage. F tilt's a little too slow to come out. I'd probably rather see an attack like Nair. K rules Nair is so quick. It's not It's not that big, but it's very quick. And there we see the reflector punishing Kit's reflector, actually. Uh, when you back away from ledge like that, you're giving your opponent a little too much area to recover back. You really want to keep your opponent pressured at the ledge a lot in this game. So I would like to see Ratha keep a, little, a lot closer to the ledge when Dark Pit's off stage. Ooh, he wanted to he wanted to air dodge past his crown because that is one thing. If Ratha doesn't grab his crown in time, he can get his own back at him and punish. So you have to be very careful with how you go things. Almost drag down off stage. Yeah, Ratha's giving a little too much leeway to his opponent right here. Um, you really want to try and keep the pressure going. Good F tilt, gonna power right through that dash attack. I think that was dash attack. Good job catching them. Neutral air. Oh, uh, yeah, he's giving... He keeps backing away too hard. When he gets his opponent to the ledge, that is the best position, you know, he can be in is right next to his opponent. So he wants to get a lot closer to ledge. Up tilt, trying to catch the landing. Gonna miss, though. Back air, gonna send Ratha right back off stage. 100 to 136. Yeah, crown is gonna get punished. And when you reflect, the crown will return even quicker. Every time it gets reflected, it bounces back even quicker, so it's a little harder to reflect and dodge. F tilts. Nair. Oh, he tried to neutral air dodge right through it. If you neutral air dodge too low to the blast zone, you're gonna die right off the bottom. So you gotta be very careful. 
Dash not gonna catch the landing. Very good. Eagles almost down to six stock right now. They're at seven. Cardinals are down to ten. Blunderbuss gonna get the suck in. Down throw. Down th down throw into fair is not true at a whole lot of percents, I don't believe. Um, it's only at like higher percents, I think, when the hit stun gets a little more uh, dramatic on the characters. Smash isn't really a, a cane about like crazy complex combos. Neutral is, I feel, in this game a lot more beneficial than, you know, block strings and things of like that as you'll get in typical fighting games. Yeah, and you gotta be ready for that reflect after that, after that point. But Ratha is gonna bring, is, is going to fall. Uh, Post is gonna get down to six stocks. And Cardinals down to 10. So now we're at a four stock deficit. You gotta be very careful in these situations. Now, I feel personally that heavy characters should be closer to the end of your player list because heavier characters are a little harder to kill. You tend to hold on to stocks a lot easier. Um, but now, I think we have the two heavy characters are out of the loop now, and I think we're going into lighter characters that are, you know, more beneficial of traversing the area. Lighter characters tend to be a lot more mobile in this game. So you tend to be zipping around trying to either avoid hits and get punishes off. Whiff punishing is very big in this game, where you want your opponent to mess up something that causes a lot of what we call landing lag, where if they're in landing lag, it means they cannot throw an action out for, you know, half of a second or a second, it depends. And half of a second sounds like such a little amount of time, but in fighting games, that's a long period of time. Uh, so in this case, Fast characters really benefit from dashing out and then dashing in to uh, punish their opponent. And we're probably going to see that with with Box next. Uh, she plays Sonic. Uh, I have not seen Box's Sonic yet, so let's see how it goes. So again, if we look at the stage list, all these stages are on the, the list right now. Everything's open. I do think that Dark Pit, I do think that Crollo did ban Final Destination and Kalos, it seems. We did have Hollow Bastion open, which leads me to le believe he left. Sm uh, they left Smashville open as well. And if they left Smashville open, they probably let some of the dual plats open as well, because they're not that far off in how they function. Um, in this case, S Sonic does very well on a lot of different types of stages. Um, probably the flatter, the better. Dual plats do give Sonic some areas to move around with spin dash and, and kind of get caught within. But we will see. If, if dual plats are open, I'm just going to assume a lot of the flat stages are gone. Uh, if there are... If Pokemon Stadium 2 is open and if Small Battlefield is open, I'd probably take one of those. I'd probably say Pokemon Stadium 2. Most people like Pokemon Stadium 2 in this game, so it's probably open. Ready? I think we're going to Pokemon Stadium 2. And here we go with Box is Sonic. Let's see what she can do. Sonic should definitely have the advantage in this matchup. Um, as long as... Three, yep, Pokemon Stadium 2. Good two, choice, good choice, good one, choice. Go! Now... As long as Sonic has the ability to kind of zip in and out between these different platforms, giving a lot, a lot of different routes with Spin Dash. So as long as Sonic can keep out and whip punish, that's going to be perfect. So let's see what you can do. Now, if you stop Spin Dash like that on Shield, it's going to be what we call unsafe on Shield, where you, you get punished for touching their Shield. So Shields in this game are pretty okay. Um, they have a lot of weaknesses, but they also have a lot of benefits because if you're shielding, you're not attacking. But the second somebody touches your shield and you do so and you do something stupid, uh, silly on somebody's shield, they can punish you pretty hard for it. But generally, you don't want to spend a whole lot of your time in the shield in this game. You want to be moving and enacting some sort of action. Back air, going to send Fox right off stage. Oh, and the up smash is going to catch her. That was like the edge of the, the area of it, too. So unfortunate. Air dodging back to stage can be very risky. You generally, on this game, want to recover low. To the to like the ledge. The ledge is typically the safest area in this game. You can generally get back to stage for free. That's a punish on the homing attack. 
Homing attack is a, such a strong move, but if you miss it, you can go flying so far off on stage, and if you hit the ground, you are in landing lag for so long. You gotta be very careful with that move and how you approach it. Up tilt. Nair, gonna send Box right back off stage. She's able to recover. I would like to see Box hold onto that jump off stage a little bit long, longer. Uh, if she can, kind of fall off to the edge of the stage a little bit. It's generally a lot safer if you're in the bottom left or bottom right side of the stage because you're able to recover low. And when you recover low, so not many characters have answers to that. You generally can recover free. And as you can see, if you kind of fall into it, you can get punished a lot easier. So you generally want to hold on to your jump and you generally want to hold on to your air dodge and whatnot. Punishing a lot of these landings. Let's see if Box can rack up a little bit more damage on Crollo and sneak out this stock. There we go. Spin da dash attack is going to get punished. Oh no. See, that low recovery... I actually kind of like that low recovery. I wouldn't really use homing attack, but I think that was a much stronger recovery than um, kind of, as we just see just now, kind of jumping back to stage overhead. Now, Sonic has a very strong back air that can probably, is probably getting close to killing at some percentage right now. Um, at 100%, it would definitely be a decent spot off stage. But if Box can get a pu good punish going, might be able to sneak out this kill. Good homing attack. Jumping out of disadvantage, and the dash attack is going to steal it. Yeah, unfortunate. Very unfortunate. But post down to three stocks. Oops. And Cardinals are still at 10. Yeah, that was, you know, it's unfortunate. What was happening there was uh, Box was recovering too high too often, and it became very relatively predictable on where they were going to be. If you're kind of drifting in uh, high and, re and landing in the middle of the stage, Dash Tack can come out really easily as like a punish option to knock you right back off stage. And you're, you know, at that point, you're not really, you're in constant dis what we call disadvantage, where... Um, you are attempting to reach a neutral area again where you're trying not to get hit or you're trying to find stage control. And if you're in that situation the entire time where you're just trying to get back to stage, then it's it's very difficult to, to play the game. Um, so you generally have to find ways of navigating back to stage uh, in creative ways. As Sonic, Sonic has a lot of different abilities to get back, especially because if Sonic holds on to their jump, you can up B and then jump from that. Um, spin uh, dash, uh, spin dash has some recovery utility, um, but generally Sonic really does like recovering low with with um, the up B, which is the spring. Now I can't imagine that Crollo is going to change the bands up that hard. I'm pretty convinced now that the bands are Kalos Pokemon League, Final Destination, and Town and City. Um, I'm pretty certain of that right now. Um, so, yeah, that's right. Shadow is up next. I have not seen Shadow play. Now it is Pyramithra, and Pyramithra is a very strong character. It feels like it feels like a lot of people have been. Um, like, I haven't seen a ton of Pyramithra lately. Um, I feel like Pyramithra stocks have gone down when it comes to their perception. But, oh my god, Pyramithra are an incredibly strong character. Um, in general, they're so fast. <laughs> and, you know, the weaknesses of Pyra are almost non-existent. Because whenever you're using Pyra, you're using her in situations that, you know, <laughs> are just beneficial to them. So their weaknesses are very few. There's, there's some recovery things that they are kind of a little weaker on. Three, but oh my god, two, Mithra's one, utility is so go. strong. So now Krolo's going down to one stock. And here we go, we're off the start. Let's go. 
I like these stairs. Snare. There's a photon edge. Ooh. Good mix up, I will say. Not many people go for that. Ooh, really good smash stack. Oh, I like that. Oh, that was the. Really reading the roll, and I like it. I like it. I like it. Now, Mithra also has the ability of Foresight. Oh my god, Prominence Revolt is so strong. And Mithra has the ability of Foresight, where sometimes when Mithra dash attacks within certain air times and frames... Oh no, that this is death. This is death. Yep. You have to hold on to your jump at all times. You cannot afford to jump, or else that happens, where you only have one jump off stage, and if you use it, you're good luck getting back. Ooh, catching a landing with Side B. Dash attack. Oh, trying to read the air dodge. Now, we're to a point where... Oh, good jump, good jump, good jump. Okay. Holding on to the jump until the last second. I like it. Don't jump, don't jump. Uh, that was another situation. They could have died for that. Ooh. Oh, that's going to get punished. Yep, 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 yep. So right now, Pun Prominence Revolt is coming out a little too often. You have to back it up. A lot of moves on Smith, a lot of moves on Pyro will kill. Really job with that, with that, uh, with that revolt though. What I will say is, with Pyra, you can take it slow all you want. Almost all of Pyra's moves kill. Um, you don't have to go fishing for any specific move. And even if you just whiff damage a little bit more, then that's even more percent where other things can start killing even earlier. So sometimes with Pyra, you want to like back, take it slow, back it up a little bit. Let your opponent fall into a different attack, like fair or back air. You can, you, when you're using Pyra, they're already at such a high percent that you're already being kind of, uh, you know, they're already being a little careful around you, but they're also being itchy to try and, you know, reduce the reduce the deficit. So you can take your time, kind of wait for a, a good disadvantage situation, and then kill from there. But yes, <laughs> Dark Pit is finally gone. Now's the next one. So now Post is down to two stocks. And CUA Cardinals are down to nine. Alright, Pyramithra, stage-wise, incredibly strong character. Yeah, ten stocks. We could do it! Shadow's got this! 100%! Oh wait, why are we starting again? No, 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 no. Dark Pit's gotta go. Dark Pit's out of here, come on! Dark Pit's got this. Uh, sorry, not Doc Pit. Sorry, Shadow's got this. Oh my god. I'm ruining it. I'm ruining it. Uh, Pyramid is such a strong character that um, so many of these stage, these stages just work. Just They just work. Um, I don't really see something that is necessarily ban-worthy for Pyramithra. Uh, you, as Pyramithra, you usually want to ban based on what your opponent is playing. And right now, that's a big mystery for Post, probably. They probably don't know who they're playing against, necessarily. But this is an another benefit as to why these crew battles are important to get kills early, because then you start revealing characters off your opponent's list. Um, so now we know that Cardinals that has a Dark Pit, but now we're going to learn another character. Now the other thing about this, though, is there's nothing stopping them from switching characters up in the next match. But this gives an idea of the kind of characters these people play. That's why, um, usually if you have players on a team that can play multiple characters decently well, then you have options, and that tends to go a, 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 a ways more. Unlike players like me, where I'm a character specialist, I only play one character, okay. <laughs> I'm going to... I don't even know. Uh, if I At this point, you know, probably ban the flat stages for Pyramithra. You tend, you tend to have more... If you have platforms, you tend to be less neutral. Uh, more neutral, rather. But it's against Pac-Man, so now I'm kind of hoping they didn't ban the flat stage. And you did. They did. Alright, so... Uh, now... Well... Pac-Man is such a weird character where Pac-Man can play, he's such so versatile. I'm kind of glad there's no platforms though, because I will say, 
Pac-Man can really hide under platforms when they exist with Hydrant. It makes him a very different breed of Zoner. And Zoner characters are characters that use a lot of projectiles, typically. But Zoners are more so characters that deny area, where if there's a Hydrant, you usually can't go to that area because Hydrant's in the way. Um, and as we can see there, it got punished for running into Hydrant. Hydrant's a very strong tool, even though it doesn't do any dirt damage outright. You usually have to hit Hydrant for it to be beneficial for Pac-Man. Uh, and as we see, denying certain area with Hydrant. Only 70 percents are kind of even, though. At the same time, having even percents in this situation is not good, because it just means that Prolo is winning. That's really... Okay. Now, when they're off stage, you tend to want to wait to see what they do, and then kind of get a gauge of what kind of options they want to throw out. I like how I like how uh, Shadow is attacking Hydrant. Whenever Pac-Man is off stage, I would probably switch to Pyra. And now, when we're in this neutral position, I would switch to Mithra. Yeah, if that's the kind of game you need to play. Is when do I switch to Pyra? When do I switch to Mithra? And you tend to want to play Pyra when your opponent is off stage or in a disadvantaged position, because it makes it a lot easier for Pyra to get hits off. Of. Right, at this point, I would probably switch to Mithra, even though the percents are at 104. Yeah, Smash Attack off stage, gonna punish the landing. And I think that might be it. Yep. Yeah, catching the jump. You have to hold on to your jumps when you're off stage, you do. And it makes things, you know, if you hold on to your jumps, you're gonna be living a lot longer. But that's gonna put Post down to zero, and the first round is over. So now Cardinals are up 1 0 on Post. So right now, score is 0 1. And we restart all the way back to the start. Everybody's got 12 stocks. Post Eagles 12. And Cardinals 12. Okay. So we're off the top. Now, it's been revealed who Post generally plays. Now, anybody from Post can switch characters if they feel they have a decent secondary. Uh, at this point, we know two characters that um, the Cardinals play. And at the start of the list now, we only have access to the first five stages at the beginning. So now, going into this, uh, I believe the the band pattern is 1-2-1, one, one, where uh, the winner gets to ban a stage. Then the uh, opposing team bans two stages, and then the winner bans... Um, and then the winner bans one, and you play on the remainder, right? I'm pretty sure that's how it works this season. Okay. Yep, okay. Yep, sorry, just looking it over. So, yeah. Now, going into this, post game two, round two, rather. Yeah, game two. I feel so referred to as game two. I believe we're starting off with Rainu again. So, with Rainu, you know, Rob really wants... It, Rob can play on whatever stage. A lot of these really good characters can play on whatever stage they really want. It's a matter... You have to also benefit. Think about what stages you probably play well on. With Rob, you probably want to go to a flatter stage um, to set up a lot of grabs a lot more often. Um, but I will say, we just now know another character, and it's Terry. Terry as a character is very mobile, but it, as an FGC character, also has a lot of potential on flatter stages. And I think that this is kind of the benefit of both worlds for a character like Terry, where this stage half the time has no platforms. So, it's just one of those things where Terry can be as mobile on these platforms as he really wants to, and when the platforms are gone, he gets a lot of benefit of catching landings. But, Rob also has the potential of dropping Gyro and really attempting to, uh, get some punishes off on that. Now, that could be a punish. Yep, side B, 27%. As Rob, I'd probably go for a lot more tags. Oh, uh, sorry, tags. A lot more grabs against Terry, especially when the, a lot of punch like these on shield. Oh, I like keeping Terry disadvantage. Hmm. Now this is a little tough because Rob doesn't have the greatest out of shield options. He can nair, 
but Nair is more of a landing option. It's not the strongest out of shield option to punish Terry with. So this might be a little tough for Rob because Terry really likes being on your shield and like making you feel the pressure. Yeah, not be able to land with that. 38%. Terry's off stage. Uh, jumping right over the gyro. Power dunk's gonna send Rob right back off stage. I like the I like the kind of mid recovery. Decent mix up. Yeah, Rainu's got to stop side being so much. Rainu should really focus on using Nair and slowly approaching and landing with Nair. Nair is gonna be Rob's most oppressive tool. Oh, get up attack is gonna send him right back off. Power wave. Up. Oh, nice snipe with that. Out there is going to send Terry right back off. 158% on... 150... 161% on Rob, though. Uh, power dunk going to get the kill. Yep, 100%. So putting... Putting uh, Ryan... Oh, sorry. Putting Rhino down to his last stock. Okay. Now... Right now... Rainu is playing a lot in shield. And playing in shield against Terry, especially when you don't have great out of shield options, is going to be a little detrimental for you. Against Terry, you you know, it's you need to be moving a lot. You need to be moving and keeping Terry outside of your bubble. Uh, dash attack trying to get punished the landing. Cross up with the with the uh, buster. Oh, side B is gonna send him right back off. Oh man. So again, post down to nine stocks. Cardinals down to 11. Okay, okay. So really strong showing right now coming out from Cardinals right now. Now, Terry was able to get a lot of punishes on landing against Rob in that match. A lot of it also boiled down to how much shield pressure was happening. Uh, Terry has the benefit of if he's able to land Nair effectively, he can pretty much do whatever he wants on your shield. He can jump away if he really wants to. He can kind of add more pressure to your shield. And then at, at that point, it's a matter of mixing it, mix up, where you need to guess. Uh, for a character like, like Rob, he doesn't have the greatest answers for stuff like that. His answers are keeping Terry out altogether. That's really what his answer is. Um, with things like Nair, because Nair is also very, very safe on shield. He has his own options to really oppress Terry um, that Terry himself doesn't have great answers to. Um, it's, but it's a matter of who, who can get those options off first. Ratha is up next. Uh, K. Rule versus Terry. It's going to be another one, tough one for K. Rule. Now, again, if you can get armor out as K. Rule, then you can do some things. You definitely can. Um, and you can definitely get Terry off stage because Terry has some really decent recovery options, but he's also, you know, not the most mobile character like when he's in the air. He's a lot more mobile generally when he's on the ground. Uh, it, it, you know, he, but Terry is a general fastballer in some ways. It's, it's a, he's a, he's an interesting character because he's still mobile, but his off stage presence isn't the most fantastic. So you can really uh, abuse Terry when he gets off stage. It's really, it pours on to power dunk and whether he wants to use that as a mix up. Three, two, now with a wider stage one, like this, um, I feel like Terry uh, benefits from a stage like this. Um, Cause K rule is not gonna be mobile enough to get from one side of the stage to the other where Terry can, especially compared to K rule. Um, you, as K rule, you generally wanna be on smaller stages and really put your projectiles in those tiny areas. Ooh, good, good parry into the, get that F tilt punish. Oh, I actually really like that dash attack. Oh my god. Oh, gonna go right over crown. 50% to 46. I like the neutral getup. I, I think neutral getup's gonna be your strongest option if it's a character like Terry, too. Because Terry, do, Terry also doesn't have any kill throws. So if he grabs you, it's not the biggest deal in the world. So. F tilt. Ooh, and still has the jump, though. Yeah, blunderbuss. I like the mix-up on the second hit. Go meters online. 
Uh, again, Ratha is giving Terry too much room to recover. He can really keep the pressure on once he has him off stage. Oh, uh, not, not quite enough to kill yet. K. Rule is a big boy. One of the heaviest characters in the game. But Go Meter is online. Good job, good job guarding Go. And Buster Wolf is definitely going to do it. So Terry, Terry's, uh, we'll call it a gimmick. Even though it's, I like this gimmick. Um, Go Meter, when Terry reaches over 100%, he gets additional moves. He gets two super strong moves that he can access using command, uh, command attacks. That are very strong and good kill moves. Right now, Terry's down to his last stock. F tilt, catching the air dodge in. Air dodge in again. Oh, I actually really like that dash attack, but timing it a little too early. I would like to see. I would like to see Wrath to do a lot more grabs instead of Crown. I, Crown is good, but I think Wrath would benefit from utilizing grabs instead of mix ups. Like dashing the opposite way. Oh no no no! You got to drift in. You got to drift in. That was definitely a miss input. He didn't want not want to do up B there. Oh no! Power dunk off the side of the stage. It's gonna take another one for Rafa. Oh no! You hate to see it. You hate to see it. See that one mess up though. Off stage really cost him because then your opponent really pushes their advantage state, and that's what you tend to need to do. You want to be on the side of the stage in order to push your opponent even farther off. Oh yeah, he has crown. You can't grab that. Good job pairing the dash attack. And catching the air dodge in with down tilt. Another thing Terry has uh, advantage of is that he has an auto turnaround where he doesn't need to turn around in order to face his opponent. He just does it automatically, which is kind of broken. <laughs> I would like to see a bit more Nair, a bit more Fair, and a bit few more grabs from Rafa. Off stage directions, 185. Even 185, he's not able to kill. Yeah, a little too much rolling, too. Right now, Terry is really taking advantage of those situations. And the crown is going to get the punish off, putting Post down to six stocks, and the CUA Cardinals down to ten. Post down to six. And now this leaves two more players from post. Uh, up next is going to be uh, Evie. Now, Evie is a returning player from a couple years ago. Uh, I haven't seen Evie play in so long. Oh my god. I'm excited for this. <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, now, Evie uh, is an inkling player. And Inkling is a character you don't see, like, a ton of anymore uh, in these situations. Over the course of the game's life, uh, Inkling has kind of, when it comes to the meta of the game, gone down. But Inkling has, still has quite a bit. Inkling is still a very strong character when it comes to their, like, neutral game plan. They, they shift in and out. One of the best dashes in the game because they literally become incredibly low to the ground where they can pancake so many things. Um... And by pancaking, it means being so low to the ground that attacks miss you. And some of the best kill confirms out of up throw, up air. Uh, but the thing is, it's a it's a tight window. And even though it's a very strong kill potential, once they leave that percent, um, there's not a ton Inkling can do to solidify certain kills. And that's where Inkling does suffer a bit, is if you get if you can't get the kill at specific percents, then it tends to suffer a bit more. But if they're if they're before that percent, you're golden. Um, Inkling also um, has a very, you know, they have Roller, which uh, the early life of this game, Roller was like a demon that people had to like really get used to. But now Roller is very punishable uh, if you're not using it in a, you know, you have to be very careful how you use Roller. But also, the ink mechanic is relatively strong mechanic, just being able to damage your opponent more effectively the more ink you put on them. And I think, that with, since Terry does generally like to be on the ground a lot, I think ink can be a very good benefit for this matchup. Uh, especially if we're on a flatter stage. Are we on, like, FD? Uh, we're on Town and City, which is FD half the time. 
And right now, Terry only has one stock, so we'll see. Let's take a look at this. We see some rolls. I like the landing fair. Oh, power dunk off stage. Burning the jump. No recovery though. Holding onto the jump that time. Air dodging in. Gonna get punished by the power dunk. When you do, when you can't really cross up Terry. So if you try to air dodge past his shield, he'll, he has a very good shot of punishing you. Oh, catching the landing with side B. Oh my God, you hate to see it so much. Uh, that could have been a punish. Uh, grab. Jabbing a little too much, but that's fine. As you can see, Ink is getting on Terry. It means a little bit more damage will be done with per hit. Now, Terry's really putting on the pressure, trying to really deny any sort of uh, area of effect from Eevee. Really putting Eevee in the corner every time. Back air, gonna send Eevee right off stage. Almost getting caught by the platform. High recovery, but that's gonna get punished by up air. Back hit, back air. F tilt. Yeah, F tilt again. Gonna punish a lot of these landings. 155 on Eevee. Uh, and out of ink. No, some ink was still in. Dash attack is going to get it. Terry's dash attack is such a solid move for, you know, just keeping kills. Getting kills and keeping it going. Jab, jab, power dunk. Tried and true. The power dunk again. Quick 57 onto Eevee. Nair to dash side B. Oh, recovering too low. You hate to see it. Uh, it was just a little too low recovery. Waited a little too long. But that's going to put Post down to the last three stops. Okay. And, and CUA Cardinals still at 10. I like the world plates, though. Very nice. So this leaves only one player left for Post. Applesauce. Now, uh, I have not seen Applesauce play. Uh, am I aware of what... Character Applesauce plays. Uh, let's see. Am I aware of what character they play? Ooh. Okay. Interesting. So Applesauce, she does play. Uh, she does play Dark Pit. Uh, it's actually not going to be Shadow this time, unfortunately. <laughs> We're going to be getting Applesauce's Dark Pit. Now I think I think Post has had a Dark Pit player in the past. I'm just, off the top of my head, I'm, I don't remember who it was. Um, who played Dark Pit? Was it Ken? Was it was it Kenshiro? Did Great play Dark Pit? I know Great played Bowser, but I think he had a Dark Pit. He, Ken Kenshiro played a few different characters, um, and once in a while he pull out a random character like Ganon. <laughs> it's like, oh man, don't bring the Ganon. <laughs> but Dark again, Dark Pit is kind of like an all-arounder character. Um, Terry, yeah, Terry is going crazy here. Uh, only, again, this is Post's last chance to get on the board. But Applesauce is going to have to do a lot of work. Um, she's going to have to do a lot of digging in order to kind of get through this. So against Terry as Dark Pit, you probably want to take get Terry away from flatter stages. Uh, you probably, I would say, uh, I'd probably do a dual plat because Terry can kill off the top, so stages with like a middle platform or um, or battlefield itself can potentially uh, give Terry some advantage. But also flat stages give Terry a lot of utility as well because he really likes to put you into shield uh, and really put the pressure on. And the more that you're kind of like below Terry um, and you're giving him the option to land, it might not be to your benefit. Granted, it's also less options for him to land, so maybe you do want to bring him to a flat stage. But I think a dual plat, for especially for the kind of combos that Dark Pit wants to kind of push with, uh, can really show have Dark Pit shine. So I would assume, though that Terry is banning things such as... I would assume Terry's banning um, a lot of the dual plats. 
maybe he might ban Final Destination, depending on how they feel personally as a player. They're they're probably going to be banning Kalos Pokemon League. Kalos Pokemon League probably doesn't have a whole lot of benefit to Terry. Um, those side platforms are just there in a way. Um, the only thing I can think of for Terry as a benefit is recovery routes. He has the option to land there with um, Power Dunk, but uh, are you really going to recover like that with Terry? Like, really? Like, you usually do Power Dunk. You don't want to get stuck doing Power Dunk on, like, a platform where you can get hit right back off stage. I don't know. I guess I guess, ter I guess the Terry player would know better than me. But I just, I don't see that being, like, a strong option for Pokemon, for Kalos Pokemon League. You probably want to ban that stage. You probably want to ban, um, you probably want to ban, oh, jeez. I mean, we saw, we just saw a match on Pokemon Steam, too, right? I don't think he's banning PS2. He's probably banning Kalos. He's probably banning Final Destination. Uh, and he's probably banning... Ready? He's not banning Town and City. I don't know what else he's banning, then. He's probably banning Battlefield, but I don't know. Terry can kill off the top on that stage. Either way. We're getting this potential last question. Oh, wow, he did not ban Kalos Pokemon League. I guess that recovery route is good for them. You don't even get a... Terry doesn't even have a wall jump, so I don't get it. Um, I guess he just wants the flat stage in general. Like... I guess so. Hey, come on, come on. And we might see that come into play, because when you're on the middle ground, you're going to be a lot more susceptible to Terry. I will say, you got to keep out of Terry's range. You really do. That's how you have to really navigate this match. You don't want to land on Terry's shield terribly often. Like, you can't... If you're depending on your character, you can put pressure... Oh, no, the air dodge. Oh, no, the SD! No! Arrow on shield is going to get punished with that side B. Oh, that's going to get punished. I would like to see posts go for a lot more grabs. Going for grabs against opponents like these would be very good. I'm going to get punished with down tilt. And down tilt is such a good combo starter for Terry. And jumping. Now, Pit ha does have the benefit of having multiple jumps, so you don't need to worry so hard about burning away all your jumps. Though jumping early can still be a problem in Smash. You definitely don't want to jump too early. Oh, air dodging. No, the air dodging to ledge is, is so tough. Air dodging ledge is, is good in this game, but you got to get a lot closer to ledge to make it work right. Uh, th this is not Shadow right now. This is Applesauce. Shadow is... Uh, this is going to be it, uh, unless we see uh, the reset from Applesauce. And right now, 84%. And 108 off stage. Can Applesauce recover? Can she do it? Oh, uh, the air dodge again. The air dodge is going to be the toughest thing. Uh, it's got to be an up B at that point when you're off stage like that. And unfortunately, that's going to be it for post. Uh, the Cardinals take it this round. To up 2-0 versus post. So, definitely got some things to work on for post this season. Um, we'll see. Probably be doing some sessions with uh, Denny. We'll see if I can hop in once in a while to take a look at some of these warm-up matches and whatnot. Um, but yeah, uh, I believe we're going to have another set tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern for the CACC. Uh, now, but yeah, I'll be here whenever we have matches. I'll be commentating for, the, for this season. Uh, and I'm going to be rating post EU Esports, uh, I believe, right now on post EU Esports. What's happening over there? What's happening over there? On post EU Esports, uh, they have, I think they have Valorant tonight. I'm pretty sure that's Valorant. Yep, Valorant. So I'm going to be rating them. Again, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. I've been Frisco. I'm really glad to be play to be commentating again this season, and I'll see you guys tomorrow, and I'll see you guys next week for uh, the ECAC. Thank you guys. I'll see you. See you later.